Hey, how's it going? It's Joe. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about hold mode on the ER301. Um, this was introduced sometime during uh, the 0.4.x firmware. Um, we're currently, as of this video, on 0.4.26 stable. So hold mode is a really cool new addition to uh, the ER301 firmware. It adds a whole bunch of functionality. Um, Basically, it lets you take you know any control that you see up here uh, in the chain, and you can move a whole bunch of controls at one time and put them all in one convenient place. Um, so it's best to probably just demonstrate. Um, here's the patch that I'm going to be working with. This is just a kick drum, a snare, a hi-hat. These are all fed into a flanger, and then we've got kind of a synth bass here, uh, and then everything is fed into Freeburb. So I'll just quickly show you what that sounds like. So there we go. Um, so let's start taking some control of these parameters with hold mode. I'm going to flip uh, this mode switch up to hold mode, and you can see it's kind of empty right now. It says uh, this is hold mode for out one and out two. These uh, are owned by the chain, uh, and there are no pen controls. So let's start pinning some controls. Um, what I want to do is set up uh, something where I can take that hi-hat and that snare drum and just drop them completely out and leave only the kick drum and uh, <clears throat> kind of the synth bass sound. So to get started, I'm going to go over to the um, level fader for this kick drum, and I'm just going to long press this. And I've got this option here called Pin to New. So let me go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask me to name my pin set here. Um, it has a default value of A, and that's fine. Uh, for now, we'll just hit Enter and select that. And you can see it's got this little pin marker up here now that shows that that is a pinned control. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm going to grab all of these different level faders. You can see now that um, I've created a pen set. There's um, We've got pen to new, but there's also an option here called pen to A, which is what we name the pen set. So let's pen the rest of these to A. My hat control, pen to A. And then finally this synth bass control. Let's pen this to A. So if I go back into hold mode now, um, by flipping the switch up, it's no longer empty. I've got a pen set here named A. And I've got all these different level controllers attached to it. Um, and they're set at the levels that they were up here um, you know, in edit mode. So like this negative six input here, it's negative six input on the base, they're set to the exact same values. So what I can do, um, if I long press on the pen set header, um, I've got this option here called clone. So I can clone that, and it's, it's automatically going to name it the same thing, but just kind of put a, a, an apostrophe after it. And I can make some adjustments to these faders now. And um, this isn't going to happen in real time um, because we're in hold mode. Uh, but this was the kick. Um, this was the snare. I'm going to go ahead and turn that all the way down. And this was the, um, the hi-hat. I'll go ahead and drop that all the way down. And so I'm going to play back the sequence. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this um, header for this pen set. A apostrophe, and when I press on enter, that's what's going to make all of these controls uh, jump to their new targets uh, down here for the, the snare and the hi-hat. So let's take a listen. So the hi-hat and the snare dropped out. My original pen set over here has these values targeted back at where they were. So it puts them all back in there. So that's pretty fun, huh? Um, let's set up another kind of performance controller here. Um, what I want to do is uh, I want to add a gate control down here on the performance that I can kind of play uh, while I'm live. So. If I go back to edit mode here, um, let me go over to my snare. And you can see this is just a raw player that has a snare sample in it. And when I fire this gate down here, it makes the snare sound. So let me take this gate control and I'm going to pin this uh, not to A or A apostrophe, but to a brand new one. I could pin it to A or, or A uh, apostrophe, but 
Um, I'm just going to pin it to a new one, and uh, it's going to call this B. And if I go to hold mode now, um, I've got this B pin set down here that contains this gate. And if I press it, it fires. And uh, I can use this in conjunction with all the other controls, and I can do this while the sequence is playing. That's pretty handy. You can do that with any kind of gate control and give yourself some, uh, you know, live performance tools. Um, I probably should mention that, um, you know, you can rename these things, right? So if I click here, I could uh, rename this, um, like maybe uh, all. This was all of my uh, levels there. And you can also, if you long press on these, you can collapse them down. Um, so that kind of tidies things up a little bit. Now I've just got um, you know something I can click here to turn on all instruments. Uh, something I can click on here to drop out the kick and the bass, and I've got my snare I can play here. I guess that won't actually work because I've got it muted out, but um, you get the idea. Um, so I guess another application that I thought was pretty cool for this is kind of like preset saving and preset morphing. Um, so right up till now we've done um, gate controls, um, we've done the level faders, um, but let's actually go back and add some pin sets for our synth bass. So I'm going to come back up here, I'm going to go into the bass synth. And uh, you can see here, I've just got this single cycle set up. This is a, this is actually pretty new too. Uh, I guess the newest unit in the ER301. ER um, this is a wavetable oscillator. Um, so if I go in here and click Edit Buffer, you can see I've got a bunch of single cycle waveforms set up in here. And uh, as I move this scan control up and down, um, this kind of, um, you know, does what wavetables do. It kind of interpolates between, um, you know the waveform that we're on and the waveform next to it um, until we get to the kind of the next full waveform. So it's a really, really fun unit. Um, what I want to do is I want to take some of these controls uh, from my base synth and put these in a pen set. So let's start with the scan control. I'm going to pin that to a new one. And let's see, let's, uh, yeah, I guess we can call this, let's call this um, base. And so you can see I've got this new pen set here. It's got the scan control on it. Let me go back to edit mode and let's add um, let's add a couple more. Um, oop, I think I moved that. Um, I've got a low pass filter here. So let me grab the filter fundamental. Let's add pin that to the base. And let me grab the resonance and we'll pin that to base as well. So. Back here in hold mode now, um, I've got three different um, parameters of the synth that uh, are set up at their current values. Let me go ahead and clone this one too. And now we've got a base apostrophe. Um, so um, one thing I could do, uh, I could actually kind of move these. Um, when you're in hold mode, things don't move like I say in real time, but if you press enter after you've adjusted to a new target, it will jump. Um, demonstrate that. So that's one way I could adjust these controls, but uh, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on there when you do that. Um, so let's um, let's press enter here to revert to where we were at in the edit settings. Um, and I'm going to flip back here to edit mode. And what I can do is adjust these in real time while it's playing. So I'm going to dial in um, you know, the scan control, the uh, F0 and the Q, the resonance, to, uh, to make a new sound while the sequence is playing. And um, when I find values I like, I'm going to go ahead and pin them to that base apostrophe control.
Um, so I flip back into hold mode now, and I should have um, some new values here. Um, I've got the higher resonance setting. Um, I've got the filter cutoff uh, much lower than what it was in the original, and I've got the scan control in a different position. Um, so I can immediately flip back and forth between these presets. But kind of the other cool thing I can do with this, it's got these, um, you know, linear faders that are on each of these. So I'm on this kind of squawky sound over here now. And if I start gradually bringing this up, it's actually going to adjust these parameters um, from where they are currently over here. Uh, and it's going to start moving them, you know, potentially in different directions and by different amounts as I bring this up. And it's actually going to morph these different uh, parameters together. So I'm going to get, you know, kind of completely new sounds as I go along. Let's give it a shot. So, pretty neat, huh? And, you know, I guess if in any way along the way, um, I found something new that I liked in here, then I could make a new preset out of that. Um, so I think uh, that's about it. That's kind of what I found with hold mode. Uh, I think there's some really neat and useful stuff in here. Um, I mean, I probably should point out that um, if I come back in here into edit mode, um, and let's just go home here. Um, these pin sets here in hold mode are owned by the channel chain, uh, out one and out two. So, you know, if I were to come in here and, um, you know, maybe save this uh, kick uh, mixer as a preset or something like that, and then I turned the ER301 back off and came back in and loaded this, um, you know, I'm, I'd look down in here and my my pin sets would be empty and I'd be scratching my head. Um, so what you actually need to do is save the channel chain here because that's... Uh, that is the owner of the pen sets. So you'll want to save the channel chain. Uh, the other option you would have here is to do um, a quick save um, because that contains all of the channel chains. So, um, yeah. Um, anyway, I think that is about it. Um, hope you got something out of this. Um, and uh, have fun. Catch you guys next time.